Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're creating a detailed game ready axe. We'll be going from the base mesh, sculpting, baking, normal maps, roughness maps and texture painting. So going through all the steps needed to create detailed high end game ready objects. I'm trying to make it as beginner friendly as possible but it's possibly a more intermediate tutorial. In this particular episode we're looking at the base mesh. In this case bringing in a reference image and tracing around it ready for sculpting on more detail later. If you like what you see here then check out the description for my website and playlist section of my channel for other free courses. Or you can follow the links to my character course where you can learn to make a full game ready detailed character from scratch. So in this episode I use 2.92 alpha but I do switch to 2.91 later on due to crashes and things. And the shortcut keys will be down in the bottom corner here. But before we start the first thing I always say to people is go gather some reference images and inspiration. And you can see the sort of inspiration I've got here. Lots of stylized weapons, mainly axes of course. Some more realistic than others, like this one here. Some more stylized, like this one here. And we're going to go a bit in between those. This is obviously a really important step for giving you lots of different ideas. The next step is drawing out thumbnails with different designs. You can, of course, if you have access to a concept artist, team up with them. I always personally really like that process though, so I'd rather do it myself because you can be really creative and come up with all interesting ideas. On that note, if you want to learn how to draw concept art for your games or your models, then keep an eye out for my new course, Learning How to Draw Creating Game Art. So here we are back in Blender, and what I'm going to do is drag in my reference image. So here's my reference image, Axe Reference 4, and I'll make this available to you. Follow the links in the description, and just click and drag it into your scene. I'll minimize this window. Make sure it's selected, and you'll see it's an empty up here. And if you ever need to hide it, you can just press the I over here. But we need to reset its location because it's sort of sticking out perpendicular to the camera. So I can press Alt G to remove any grabbing and Alt R to remove any rotation. Now it's flat on the ground. I can just press R, X and then 90 and that will rotate it in the X axis 90 degrees. Then I can press G, then Y and move it backwards out of the way. Now I'm ready to trace around my object. So I can go to front view with one on my numpad for this I'm going to delete the default cube and I'm going to use a cylinder for this section and a plane for this section which I'll then extrude out and make it thick. Okay so I'll start at the bottom here, I'll shift right click so my 3D cursor moves to that point and then zoom in on that section. Shift A to add, mesh, cylinder. Now it's really important at this point you go to the dialog box at the bottom corner here and change the vertex count. At the moment it's 32, which is far more detailed than we need. We're going to go reasonably high poly for a game object, and possibly a bit more than might be necessary for maybe a portfolio piece or something like that. But these days polygon count isn't as important as it used to be, and we can get away with a fair few. But 32 is way more than we need, so we can bring that down to something like 16. I'm always choosing something that's divisible by 4, then we can cut it into quarters if we ever need to and certainly something you want to be able to cut in half because the axe is fairly symmetrical across the Y axis. So we can use that to our advantage. So we've got 16 there, that's good. And that's all fine, so let's scale that down and start moving it into position. So R to rotate, S to scale. Okay, at this point I think the easiest way is to go into X-ray mode here. Let's zoom in on that a bit more and go to edit mode with tab so edit mode up here and face mode with three on your keyboard, not your numpad and you'll select the faces up here. I can then select the top face. It's difficult to see it's selected but it is highlighted and I can start moving this into position with G to grab. So let's move it around here and extrude it out and then G to grab, R to rotate and just follow the axe shape going upwards. E to extrude, R to rotate, G to grab, S to scale if you need to and just move them into position. We'll have to do something slightly more different with the topology here perhaps, but we'll see about that as we go. Now you can see from here, the distance in between each of my edge loops, it's fairly big at the moment. I can always add topology if I need to, just by pressing Control R and then maybe scaling it or moving it around slightly. But for the most part, start off fairly low poly and you can always add them later on. Now where there's a drastic movement in shape, so you can see I'm not aligned with the shape here, then you'll definitely need to add another loop cut. So control R in here, I'll scale that down and move that into position more. Now remember when you press control R, you automatically go into edge mode. So go back to face mode with three to select the top face and then keep extruding upwards. We'll have to look at this from the other views and adjust accordingly. 
Okay, so we've followed that up, that's great, and we'll just sort out the bottom here. Okay, so let's have a look at that from other angles. And of course, when I move my 3D cursor, it's snapped to my reference image here. So I'm gonna go back to object mode, G and then Y, and move that forward slightly so it's out of the way. And now let's have a look. Now where I've scaled in, you can see it's a lot thinner, and that probably doesn't really work. So we need to adjust it from this side as well. But before we do that, let's add our mirror modifier so it mirrors across the Y axis like this. Now you can go in like this, go to side view, delete half your shape, and then add the mirror modifier. I find it much easier though to use the add on auto mirror. So if I go to edit, there's the auto mirror options. You need to press N to get to this menu. If you haven't already, then make sure you enable this by going to edit, preferences, add ons, type in auto, and there's the auto mirror under mesh. Make sure it's ticked and then close this down and then you'll have the auto mirror options available under the edit menu over here. So press N to get this menu up and then press edit and then under edit, we want to mirror in the Y axis, but the positive Y, as you can see from the Cartesian coordinates up here is going in this direction. So we actually want it in the negative. So we see the front. So we press one to go to front view. We'll always see and be able to edit the front of it. So Y in the negative auto mirror. And can you see half my mesh is deleted? And if I go to the modifiers, you can see my mirror tool here mirrored in the Y axis. And it's also got clipping enabled. What it's also done is with the top faces, as you can see here, it's cut them in half for us. So it makes it much easier to mirror objects. Okay, so what we will want to do is just move this and adjust this around slightly. So if I go to front view and this time go to vertex mode, I can select vertex at the front here and use the proportional edit tool. So that's at the top here and O is the shortcut. So if I select the one right at the front and press G to grab, you can see the circle of influence and it's affecting too much at the moment. I can then use the wheel of my mouse to bring it down and then it just affects the ones around it. And I can start almost sculpting the shape. So one's down here, for example, it doesn't matter if you grab more than one and just change your circle of influence. So it's adapting the shape to your liking. That's a bit better, probably this up the top here as well. And I might put another loop cut in here so we can bring that in a bit. Okay, let's go to side view with three on my numpad and let's have a look at the shape. I could probably pull these ones out slightly, G then Y, so it doesn't have too much distortion between the shapes. And remember to use the wheel if you need to. And a bit of undulation like this is absolutely fine. And like I say, use the wheel to adjust the circle of influence as I call it anyway. Let's go back to front view and just see where the axe head is going into our piece of wood. Just make sure it's nice and wide. So it starts at this point. So we'll make these three a bit wider. Now I can press G then Y here. You'd think I'd press scale in the Y, but G then Y, because these are clipped together, it's going to do the same thing. It's working okay, but I think this needs to go in a fair bit. So this time I'll press scale in the Y, so you can see what happens when I do that. Can you see how it brings them all together apart from these ones here? So scaling will sort of bring them in in the average point around here. But if I press G to grab in the Y, then it will bring them all in. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we'll work on the actual axe head. Want to go to front view, tab into object mode, and let's bring in a plane. So shift A to add, mesh plane. And we can't see it at the moment because it's flat against the floor here. So first we need to bring it forward, G then Y, and just bring that forward a bit. R, X, 90 to rotate it round. And let's just make sure it's in the middle. So let's go three to side view. Again, we can't see it, but we can see the object center there. So G to grab, and I'll move it up to the top as well. Okay, so somewhere around there. One to go to front view again, and let's start editing it to our shape. First of all, we can scale it, and I'll start in the middle here. And let's go to edit mode and start moving these vertices around. So I'm in vertex mode, so one on your keyboard to go to vertex mode, and I can move them around. Now, notice I'm getting a circle every time I move. That's because I've still got proportional edit on, so make sure we turn that off. We don't need that for the moment. And let's extrude this edge out. I can select these two here, E to extrude, and pull them out. You can always go to edge mode to do this, but it's actually a bit easier in vertex mode, then you can just move the vertices once you've extruded them. So select them both, E to extrude, and then select the vertices and G to grab. E to extrude, and we'll probably have one more extrusion out here. And then these two. Notice I'm not doing the sort of dinks and notches yet. 
I'll do the base shape and then do those later. Okay, so at this point, we'll need some more topology, otherwise it's just going to be a flat line from here to here. So we'll do one loop cut down the middle, like this, so Control R and then double left click. And now I'll start grabbing these and extruding them out. And then I'll add some more topology in a second. Okay, so we need some more in here. So I'll press K to get the knife tool. So that gives me the knife tool and anywhere I left click, it will cut into the shape. It's best to do it from edges and vertices. Can you see how this green square snaps and it outlines red when you hit a vertex. So that's helpful, we know we're hitting a vertex there, so I'll start from that point. So left click, and then you can left click through these different edges here. If you're having any problems, it may be that you have some doubles, so just make sure you remove doubles. Once you've finished cutting, you press enter to confirm, and then we can move that into position. And another cut from here. And you can actually just go all the way to the end like this and press enter and it will cut for you between them. Okay, if we want to keep this as quads, go to edge mode with two, select this edge and press delete dissolve edges. Now we've actually got a quad base mesh and we can start tidying this up a bit. I'll put these where the blade is here and we can make it look more quad like if we want. Okay, let's go back into object mode and just quickly see what that looks like. Come out of wireframe and we've got a basic ax shape there. In the next session, I'll be talking about how we can make this solid and add some details. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.